Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend fake? Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique Hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Mr. Jamaica. What's going on? No, no, you know my dad walk on. Man, I, hey, man, look, man. It's going down, man. Uh, I'm here, man. I, I'm set up, man. I got my guy here. Lamar Lubin is in the bit Legendary. Lamar Deuce Lubin, yes. Lamar Deuce Lubin is in the building. Man, what's going on, man? Man, you know what? I had to come back. I really had to come and just thank you guys so much. Because, you know what? Ever since, y'all don't realize that y'all started me off. You know, I'm back in the biz. Really? Doing my thing. And you guys were the first interview that I did. It was hard, too. It was the first. It was hard. What do you mean it was hard? I loved it, man. Let me tell you. So now I got two songs out. I got. I seen that. I got, I got a song called Just Like That. Well, I got ballad in my box of course just like that which is a line dance and uh, it's just got played on the radio just got played on the radio uh, uh, and then next thing you know it I got a new song with DJ Cali Remix my producer the one yeah I've seen that it's called Never Forgotten it's I about, love that song man. man it's about all those that we've lost in Southern Soul and also people that you know you just lost people listening to it and going man it made me cry it's like it's so neat I got people like Nellie Travis calling me I got o Omar Cunningham you know the, the Southern Soul people calling me telling me Dudes, we love this song. Thank you for coming out and doing this song. And I guess gotta thank DJ Cali. Remix is gonna be on an album called The Untouchables, which is an album full of nothing but producers. Wow. Something different. Instead of just having our acts on there, it's the actual producers bringing their, bringing their artists. And it's called The Untouchables. It just came out on DistroKid, uh, uh, Spotify, Amazon, all of that, two days ago. Now, Man. my album, my album is, I'm getting ready to do my album. I got two gospel songs I'm about to put on there, so I got to let you guys hear those. And um, I, got, I got my songs are also on Spotify, all platforms, at DistroVid, DistroKid, all that. Man, you know, I learned a lot from you as well when you first came. I did not, I wasn't as deeply indulged into the whole uh, Jerry Heller NWA, you made me, and, and since then I've interviewed DOC, I've interviewed uh, 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 Hutch with 187, I've interviewed- uh, 87 Mafia? Yeah, mm -hmm. I interview all these I guys, so all these stories, you know, they, they come back together. I told them all these stories of all these different situations, everybody telling their side, it become like a whole, like putting a puzzle together. Man, I, and, and, and I tell you, I need MC to do a Hammer, documentary. that was another one. I need to do my documentary. I, I'm trying to get trying to get some people together so we can put the documentary together. We can get like either a movie together or stuff because these need to be told. I mean, it's history, but it needs to be told because we need to tell it for the future. We yeah. need to also tell it for these youngsters that's out there that's wanting to do what we do and understand that, you know what I'm saying? Like. Their shoulders, you know. I love that they did. You know, the 50th anniversary of hip hop. I'm be honest with you. Oh, and speaking of that, DRS needs to be a part of 50th anniversary of hip hop because we're the first group that came out yeah, yeah. singing. Yeah, you yeah. know, looking like we we about to rap, but we singing. Man, you sure did. Saying? That we're the first. I don't care. I, anybody can tell. Oh, you know, I know they got some other groups, but we the first one that took it nationwide and took it worldwide. Man. So, yeah, we need to be, even though, you know, my, we, we, we need to be acknowledged. I don't care what nobody say. No, you guys, you guys were the ones. When y'all when you, when you, when sung that song, uh, This Is For The Homies, This Is For My Homies, like, like y'all, y'all was, look, this was a healing time to, to, you talk about, we talked about mental illness, the show before this one, that song, like I told her when I introduced you to her, that song was about mental illness. That was healing before that was healing, man. And that's the reason why I hooked up with the Ubora Institute. I am doing a concert February 19th at the Atrium in Atlanta. And too bad y'all can't be down there. I'm in Atlanta? 19th, 19th of February. It's a Sunday. I'm being asked, well, man, shout out to Umar Johnson. He just hit me up, too, on something. Like, it, 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 Dr. Umar, like, like, I'm being real with you, man. Everybody, everywhere is moving everywhere, and I'm trying to figure out where to go. Well, if any, look, how do, I show, do I show, how do I show it to the camera? It's right here. You got two? No, right here. Oh, right here. Look, if y'all can make it out to Atlanta, I will be there on the 19th with LJ Echoes, Jeter Jones, Tasha Mack, OC Soul, Nigel Perkins, myself, Lamar Deuce Lubin, doing Gangsta Lean, doing my new songs, doing all that. I got a song by Johnny Taylor that we do I Believe by Johnny Taylor. So if you come out there, it's not just for us, but it's for, it's called Ubura, 
uh, Institute is about mental health in our community, with our youth and with our adults and with our women. The reason why I really want to work on the mental health is because even with all the killing going on now, with all this stuff, it really has, basically, it ties in with mental health. Because if you don't feel that another person deserves to live, if you feel like you can kill somebody and, and have no repercussions, if you feel like it's okay to, to, uh, to take somebody's generations away, because that's what we do when we kill somebody. You don't understand what you do to that child or the family member, the mother, the father, the brothers, the sisters, it just doesn't affect you and that person that you killed, it affects a whole community, a whole village. And we gotta learn mentally that we gotta work. We, we, we all one people, really. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, I understand I always say, when you see a brother that you don't get along with, I tell people, don't trip, because you ain't from the same tribe. That's real. Because we come from different tribes, really, from Africa. We came, all, everybody came off the boat, wasn't from the same village. Wow, I mean, you know, you when you talk about it, I believe you told me you was almost signed to uh, EZ, or was it EZ? Mm -hmm. um, just uh, you and the people that you met coming up. I, it, there was so many different stories you told, because we did almost two hours. You don't know if you realize that. We had a good time when we first met. And I, I just kept thinking when I went back and when I finally was able to recoup it, because it took me a while to get your information back. I lost everything, 12 terabytes, and I was able to get yours back and a few other ones, and, and that's why it took so long. But when it came out, when I was able to gather oh, it, man, man it did you, a man. good job, bro. I put it together, 000, man, 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 it was going crazy. Man, 17,000, I was like, what? And then people started calling me, and, and then people were like, That's hey, what man, everybody keeps telling me, like, like man, your show made this happen. And, and that's the reason why when you said, well, I'm coming back, I said, well, you, I'm going to come and just, I, so I just got I tell you guys that they the real deal. You got to come on. You, gotta talk. you know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, when they call you, come talk to them because they real. One thing I love about you guys, y'all real. Oh, you getting that mic a little yeah. closer. Yes, because I can hear it. Yeah, okay. she's like, I got you need got to get closer. Ooh, you mm -hmm. kicking it. That sound good, it too. sound better when you're Now, now okay. sing a little okay. bit of that for the homies for me. Go ahead. Uh, this song's dedicated to my homies in that gangster lean. Why'd you have to go so soon? Come on, give it to me. <laughs> it seems like... I it seemed like yesterday we were hanging around the hood. Now I'm gonna keep your memory alive like... A homie should. Man, that's Lamar Lubin right there, man. I just wanted to give y'all a little bit. Lamar, no, 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 let me tell you. And because of that, I got DRS back together. The rest you of the did? Guys, well, not the guy. You know, one of them was locked up last time you was with me. No, two of them are locked two up. Two of them. But I got, not the, I got the guys that came after the originals. Okay. I got, we actually start our first, we're going to do a little mini tour. We actually start our, start our first again as DRS in Meridian, Mississippi. That's beautiful. April 22nd. That's hard, man. April 22nd. It's, it's Cut Close. Shit's in the back. Mm -mm. Cut Close, us. Uh, Sons of Funk. I don't know if you remember Sons of Funk with Master P. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, who else? A couple of other artists on there. Really? You, when you talk about MC Hammer, you know, people used to try to play him as if he was like just a, because this guy different. When I started to research him since I met you and when you told me those stories, I thought he was just a regular dancer dude in some big pants. No. But this dude is a, not only an entrepreneur, this dude was somewhat a uh, gangster. No, I'm gonna be much. real with oh, you. No, I'll be real. I tell people, I said, you know, I said, you know, we thought we was going with the non gangster. We ended up going with a kind of gang. It was like, oh, wait a minute, hammer ain't that? Because you know, you would when you first, you don't think about it. He in the pants. That's what I'm telling you. Pants, and you thinking, oh, he's just goofy and stuff. Then when I got to meet him, I was like, oh no, Hammer Street. He's street. He's street. I was like, okay. You know, the high street boys, they was like, he really is street, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy, man. And, and, and what's sad is that, you know what's really sad? Think about this, all the rappers that talked about Hammer for getting deals and getting all these endorsements, do you know they all got endorsements? That's how they make money. They ain't making money for selling no records, no. Wow. I mean, think about it, you get them streams of one cent a piece and stuff like that, no. They make, we make money off endorsements. That's off of people crazy. actually endorsing us, their clothes, cologne, liquor. Think about all that. that. All that. These rappers are making money the most off of having their own liquor, putting their name on liquor and getting proceeds from that. Let me ask you this. When Death Row came, because it came after NWA, when Suge Knight came on the scene, it seemed like everywhere people, when he wanted to come in a room, I was in a room when he came in once, in a, in a casino, everybody started whispering, I'm not playing. They started well, no, no, whispering. I believe it, I'm, I'm being I, real. I with you. So, so that's what I'm saying, like, 
How was that Suge? Was it as terrifying as people made it to be? Well, you know what? For you, you know. I have well, you know what? The thing is, is that Suge had, you know, the, we don't, to be honest with you, I don't know if it was true or not, but Suge had this kind of, um, people told me, and then, you know, and I hope I don't get in trouble, but I don't care, but Suge was under Harry O, and so everyone knew Harry O was like the business, so you didn't mess with Harry O. So if you didn't mess with Harry O, you didn't want to mess with Suge. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And then- Was uh, Harry O here? Or no, was Harry he, was locked in, in prison. But he still was- yeah, Oh, man, yeah, Harry, shots. Harry O, he out, he still calls shots. What do you mean? <laughs> peace, Harry O, peace out, he's still calling shots. I remember, you know what? Um, somebody told me it was, uh, Cotton Pickle. What's his name? You remember himself, Cotton Pickle? Um, the one I always interview. Yeah, I can't remember. He, he, him and Larry, he's, he, he's, Harry O, he deals with him. Yeah, Harry's out now. Yeah, I mean, he I know he sees him because, because, you know, I think he's under, you know, he, yeah, but he, he I heard that. Seen, I'm but, serious. But, you know, he out and he, he, I heard he's doing business. I heard he, you know, he, he got his stuff together. He's doing his thing. And, he, you know, I, I salute him because. Why was you and Suge hanging out here, though? Because what happened is, is Why? that, remember Hammer went to death row. Sure did. So what happened is before he went to death row, I was supposed to go to death row. And so what happened is, is that, you know, she had heard some stuff about me. It was like, hey, I like your voice. Want me to put you on some backgrounds? And, and so I used to stay. Everybody stayed in Fremont. I stayed in L.A. I had a girlfriend that stayed in L.A. in Inglewood. Okay. So I like to be in Inglewood all the time. So I always fly down and go, you know, and hang out with all the. That's the reason why I'm one of the ones that knows a lot, a lot of people in the industry. Because I came to L.A. Wow. And I lived in L.A. And I just fly back. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Oakland, to Fremont, yeah. and work with him. But but when I did that, when I came to L.A., shit would be around, and, and I would be like, he'd be like, hey, you, what you, we got this party. You want to go here? You want to go there? And I was like, yeah, you know, you wide-eyed. You're like, yeah, of course I go with shit. But then I realized that um, being around shit might not have been so. And then I got a little, um, I'm gonna talk, I ain't going to talk about it now, but I'm going to talk about it in my documentary or whatever. But me and Suge had a little falling out, a little distance, you know, a little falling out. And because I had the falling out with Suge, I realized that because Suge respect didn't do anything to me, I got a little rep in L.A. Because okay. everyone thought that I was, I seen him at the American Music Awards before he got arrested and everyone just, and what was so sad was that the people that were walking with me all dispersed. When really? I, Suge and Suge, I told you they act weird. They dispersed when they saw, because they knew Suge was not really happy with me at the time. Yeah. And I grabbed him and we just shook and he said, hey man, we gotta give it. And after that. So y'all did, was able to come together and oh, yeah, no came standing. to me and said, you know, I mean, there's a deeper story than Of course, that. I and mean, you're gonna you know, tell that in documentary, yeah, 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 but, yeah, but when y'all see it, at least it didn't come but to I had, I had, you know, I had some protection at the time. So, you know, so it's, a, it's a deep story. So, I mean, my thing is that, but he was cool. And what got me was I realized, I said, these folks that I was hanging around didn't ever have, didn't have my back. They didn't have my back at all. I said, I couldn't believe that I walked up and they all, they all just dispersed. Like, you know, cause I guess they thought, oh, Deuce about to get shot dead, something, yeah. or something like that. But, but, um, but I've seen that with Shook. I've seen where he's, I'm, I'm gonna give a story and I don't care if you get mad, if you tell, we were at, um, Prince used to have a club. Okay. And um, people, gunfire started going off and the you know, Crips was on one side, Bloods is all running around. And what happened is I, Shook was outside the limo Shooting, just bam, bam. And I remember I opened the door and I always remember I said, look at this $20 million idiot shooting at people about to get killed. Cause at the time, that was back in the nineties. He was like, we're 20, $30 million. And to us, that was could have been a billion to us, you know, back then. But I just was tripping. I was thinking, look at this dude. He worked all this money and he up there, you know what I'm saying? He doing the street stuff. And you know, you know, and here all these other people are supposed to be gangsters, and all the gangsters is hiding in the cars and running around and shit out there. Just you know I heard that? stories, man. I heard stories. One one story I heard just recently on my show that Suge was going to do a uh, he lost seven hundred thousand dollars trying to do a Death Row East Coast, and then I heard he lost four hundred thousand trying to do a Death Row Atlanta, like in the South, and and it's like. And the question came up on the show, like, how would he lose that much money? It was like, that's not, that wasn't a lot of money when you were the type of guy he was in the money. Oh, yeah, would you have him having 20, 30 million with the company at the time? And you got to think about, it, he had the biggest rappers of all time on his, on his, on his, you know. On, Which project it. did you like the most that he dealt with? 
Cause you had Snoop, you had Dre, I you, had, you had Pac. You know, that was yeah, Pac. Homie, so Pac was, Pac was uh, the homie. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I, I was with Digital Underground. You know, I knew Digital. And so all you that. know, Money B. Well, Man, I'm talking Ron- the other day. Tell Ronnie, I said, Ronnie, I said, what's up? Tell him Deuce was. He'll be like, Oh, you seen Deuce? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Ronnie used to be my manager. Really? Yeah, yeah. Money B was my manager for a while. We did a song called. Um, um, remember uh, when Master P did um, Na 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 Na? Yeah. Me and me and Money did a song like. <laughs> y'all gonna just do y'all own. Oh, no, no. We was actually, we did it before he did it. Oh. But, but uh, I was kind of drunk on the song. <laughs> and I said it. And I said, oh, I'm hella high. So I said, ooh, I'm hella high. <laughs> so have you, ever, so you met Master P and all them before? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know Silk? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Silk what could you tell me about Silk? Um, just that they, I mean, because I work, my cousin is actually Rico. Uh, okay. from, you ever heard of Sons of Funk? No. They're from Master P. Okay. So my, that's my cousin. And so we actually, he's on, we're, we're, he's part of the tour that I'm mm-hmm. doing. Um, it's, it's called Master P Meets with MC Hammer. It's, it's a DRS. Uh, it's uh, Sons of Funk. It is um, uh, a Bleed, MC mm-hmm, Bleed, mm-hmm. Uh, Natasha, and uh, Moby, 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 um, I can't think of Moby, whatever, Moby, mm-hmm. Moby Dick or something like that it's called. But we're all doing a tour, trying to do a tour together. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, so, you know, um, studio tone is related. So a lot of people don't know that. But, so lot. what kind of person is Silk? I mean, like, I if you had to tell me why. I didn't know, I didn't oh, know, don't, him person, don't like, know him personally. Okay. I just know his persona when he, because oh, okay. you got to realize that we all have personas when we get around each other. Mm-hmm. But when you get back home, you're terribly, I ain't going to lie, we different people. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of, like, I was, I was just telling somebody just the other day, when I was on the road, with like when I did the Silk tour and I was, it was Silk, I, was, I just found a little, I put it on Facebook, the little placard of DRS, it was Silk, it was H Town, I think, um, it was Intro, all of that. You know what's a trip? Everybody who, who, like you could always tell those people that were, that were brought up in church. No joke. Mm-hmm. When you're on the road, you could always tell those that were brought up in church. church. I, I agree with that. I, I reason, could see that. The reason why is because, you know how like you had those dudes that would just do anything? But then you always had the church boys that grew up in church. You might they might be gangster now. They might be doing this and that. But at the end of the night, they might be in the same room chilling and talking about the old school, you know, harmonizing, singing some gospel songs and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily being in the room smoking or, you know, doing all that stuff. But there was always for some reason there was always that you could tell because it was always a line that the, I call it the church boys. Always a line the church boys would be like, Okay, I'm gonna do this much but I'm not gonna cross this right here. You get what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And it's just something about, it. and I think that, the, I mean, some people gonna get mad and say, oh, Lamar, why are you saying that? But I just think it's the way, I love when I heard you guys talk about God earlier and about, about your relationship with God, because even though I do all kinds of stuff under the sun, I mean, I'm a, heathen, I'm a heathen, I'm be real with you, I'm a heathen saved by grace. He's still God, but, he's still set on the throne. He's God and God alone, and when you know you have that in your life, no matter what happens, he protects you. And I'll be honest with you, I feel like I'm here because of God's protection, because there were prayers put upon me that my grandmother, my mother, myself, people around me prayed for me because I look at some of the other members in my family, I mean, my group, and I say, I could be there. That's all right, that's all right. I'm, but I'm here, I'm here, I'm here on Boss, Boss Talk 101. 101. Baby, you know what I'm up, saying? Man. So, and I'm the only DRS that can be on Boss Talk 101. Man. I mean, they, you might be able to go inside and do a, but, <laughs> but I'm the one that can come to you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on, on Boss Talk 101. When you, okay, you think about, you guys, man, y'all, you know, during that time, you said something early when we first started. You said that y'all was the first, uh, like, singing group that looked like y'all might have been rappers, to be honest with you, but y'all was singing yeah. good music. Uh, what was the second group that came out after y'all? Because I know you would know, because y'all was young, and y'all like, oh, they, they, they do men like us. Well, there was a group that was before. It's called uh, uh, Highland Place Mobsters. Okay. Highland Place Mobsters was one. Um, I'm trying to think. I can't really, honestly, singing. Um, um, oh, of course, it was my homies. Of course, it was Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh. But a lot of people don't know that we actually was in the same camp at one time. They was when with was easy. that? Well, they oh, were with easy. easy. And we were easy, and it was up to easy to decide. I mean, I was under the impression easy didn't want us, but I, I found out later on that he did. 
But we thought he didn't want us because, see, back in the day, we used to do these things called demo deals. So you had three months. And then after the three months, there was a cooling off day, like one day, and they would get one day to decide whether to pick you up or not. Well, we thought Easy didn't call us because homeboy in our group told us, oh, he didn't call. And we went to Hammer. That's why we went to Hammer because if not, I would have went with Easy. Easy was the one who I wanted to go with. I want to ask you about, like, like when Easy E. And shook them got into it. And Dr. Dre used around when all that stuff was going on. Like I didn't pick no sides. <laughs> I know you didn't pick no sides, but you had to see it. You had to live it. You had to. Was it really being here? You were living in California at the time. Mm -hmm. Was it really like a beef that was just on wax, or was it something where when you seen different things moving in the city, anything could go bad? Well. It got to the point where it, 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 it wasn't really them, but it was the people around them. There you go. It became like, it became like a real stuff on the streets. You know what I'm saying? People chose sides. And when people start choosing sides, you got to realize that that's when violence started happening. And then, now when, when uh, Big got, when, when, when Pac was killed, I was in California when he was in Vegas. Okay. So I was in California at the time. Now, when Big was killed, I was in Japan performing. Okay. And they, I remember the Japanese people said, oh, your friend, your friend that got killed. Your friend, the Biggie got killed. And I was like, what are you talking about? And I mean, it was just news all over the world that Biggie was killed. And you have to realize that at that point, that's when you get these youngsters, these kids that chose sides. That mm -hmm. was like, and honestly, only the people that know what really happened are the people that pulled the trigger and the people that were really a part of it. We don't know. Every, everything else from us is just speculation. But but what happens is is that um, we, and this is what with me, goes on with media now. Nowadays, because be honest with you, I mean, even though I'm sad about it, it, it helps me out. All these new deaths that are coming along, all these rappers dying, People are calling me saying, hey, can you do Gangsta Lee? That's why i never forgotten. We got people that, you know, from the Southern Soul that are gone. And my, my manager was like, hey, let's write a song about them, you know, because they're no longer here. But now I'm starting to get calls from people saying, can we'll pay you this much? Can you fly into, you know, this, this dude, Tyree, you know, he raised in Sacramento. I was raised in Sacramento. Uh -huh, you know, he's uh -huh. from Sacramento, California. And, and the reason why I want to do it, and we were talking about the mental illness thing, is that, I mean, them cops are mentally ill. That well, what just happened, yeah. Because they didn't understand that they're killing their own kind. They're killing their own generations. Who's to know that, I mean, who's to know that he, Tyree, might have married one of their cousins, sisters, you know what I'm saying, anything like that. Who's to know, you know, families could have been united at one point. We don't, we, we have to value life. And when you don't value life, there's something mentally wrong with you. Uh -huh. And there's a lot of us that, that don't value life. And, there's, and it's because the way our upbringing, we don't feel that we're worthy. I just met a brother who just got out of prison. Um, he's 38. And uh, I met him. Um, I mean, smart brother. And he had tattoos all over his face. But he said, I, I'm a singer. And I write music. And just before I came here, he, 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 um, he spit some stuff to me, some poems to me. And what got me was he said in one of the poems, he was like, um, are you mad at me for, for disliking the people that got privileged over me? Because he was just saying, because he felt like he wasn't born out of love. He was born out of lust. And I think that's deep when you think about it. And I thought to myself, I said, that's basically what God's saying about we were born in iniquity, wasn't that's it? That's it, that's exactly it was, what he's that's saying. That's what he was, I go, I go, it took me all this time to realize, oh my God, he's talking about we were born in iniquity and born sin, shaking. and that we weren't, yeah, and so we weren't born out of love like we want you to be here. We was born out of, my daddy, my mama, they was sexual, they wanted to have some sex. Mm. And we don't, and we don't, and we don't, and so what happens is, we're brought up in a society with the media telling us that, you know, we gotta live this Brady Bunch lifestyle, and. The Brady Bunch people didn't even live the same lifestyle. They didn't. They was actors. And we trying to get to that life, and it ain't real. And we need those, those people to come and talk to us to say, hey, check this out. This is what's really going on. This is, what's, this is what's real. And that's why I'm working with Ubura. Um, I'm going to be doing a couple of concerts for them, trying to raise money for it, because he's putting money back into the schools, putting money back into the youth of Atlanta and California and New York and all over, because we... But as black people, I'm gonna tell y'all, we don't believe we need mental health, um, but we do. We do need, we need counselors, we need that. I'm not saying we need the medication and all that, but we need someone to talk to. We and need somebody that. Let me ask you this, cause, cause I'm in LA right now. Shout out to LA, man. For, shout out for Kenyatta even having us here. But 
I just want to ask you, like, being in L.A., being that you are in a place where people trip over colors and they say things about you got to be in this. You say you didn't pick a side. That's cool. But how did you maneuver around the gangs and the violence that was going on around you? Because it's like in it's like in war. If you step on a landmine, it could blow you up. Like, how did you not become that crip or that blood or that or that tree? What they call it? The, the tree? What was it? Tree top. Tree top. Fruit town. How did you not become a bumped and okay? Type well, of I'm, guy? Gonna be, I'm gonna be honest how? with you because I know some people gonna say, "Oh, Deuce, you lied." Okay, so I kind of my brother was a crip. Okay, so I was affiliated with the Crips. I was. I we had one brother in the group that was affiliated with Bloods. Um, so so growing up, I didn't really hang with Bloods. I hung with nothing but Crips because my brother was a Crip, and that's how we grew up. Okay. Your brother's a Crip, you hang with Crips. You know what I'm saying? Your brother's a Blood, you hang with Bloods. Did, you but did with that push you into some situations with oh, different, yeah. different I mean, gang violence? Up, oh yeah, growing up, oh, I've been shot at. I've been, you know, I've, I've gotten into gang fights. I've, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that boy, I tell you, that's why I got to do my documentary. I've been into some things. You know, because of that, you know, chased by a whole bunch. Man, I remember we had to leave our car. We was in Sacramento. My brother, my brother was known. So we had all these people coming after us, trying to, you know, shoot at us and, and hit us and do all kinds of things. We had to run, leave the car, and run out, and just, you know, we. I've, I've, I've been through those situations. But this is what this is why I tell people. You know, how some brothers be like, "Oh, I ain't never been in trouble with the law, and I've been doing this. I went to, I went to college. I did that. Grad, I did all that." But what I say is, it's only by the grace of God that we still here, because they, I got I got friends that just happened to be in the car with someone that had a gun that was that had a body on it. They they in jail for life. Wow. They didn't do nothing. Think about it. We have people that actually, my little brother, my little brother is in jail. He, he got 25 to life, and I wasn't educated at the time. I thought he meant, well, we could get him out. At least he only got 25 years. But they put 25 to life, which means he actually got life. Wow. Let me ask you this, man, going back to Hammer a little bit. What's the most gangster thing that you ever seen Hammer do? When you say gangster, it don't have to be done something to somebody, just something that was a move, like a chess move, bam. What, he did that? In a, I ain't gonna say nothing. But, <laughs> you yeah. see what I'm saying? I ain't saying nothing. But, no, no, but I mean, but, a I mean, gangster but, move is don't but, have to be that somebody got hurt. But, but but the thing is, is that Hammer, he, um, because he's very smart, very Correct. business, very Correct. business, very smart. But I mean, there are times when I've seen him check people, and I'm like, oh, oh really? Like, oh, okay, like, okay, okay, yeah, you get checkmate. Yeah, yeah, you get checkmate. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, okay, okay. <laughs> that's what I was talking about. Like, okay, people like, don't know, really see him in that light when you think about. You know, it. That's why he, I because he's more like a like a Barry Gordy sometimes. He's chilling. Well, you, you you know, and then you don't realize Barry Gordy was a gangster too. Come me think about it. He's a pimp. Come on, <laughs> I ain't gonna be mad, Sherry. Don't be mad. All his kids, they know me. Don't be mad. Your daddy was. I mean, think about it. he ruled. He ruled with an iron fist. He ruled. And if you didn't go by the rules, you okay, okay, well, then you out. You know what I'm saying? Was you one of those guys that wanted to meet, because you were younger, y'all was running around, man, Quincy Jones and all those guys. Did you want to, like, link with those guys? or did was Because you knew they was in the business. You was a great singer. You could do anything with anybody. Uh, who was the people that but you I inspired did, I, to be around? Well, I had, I, had a, I had a grandmother named Linda Hopkins. And okay. She was a blues and jazz. You guys look her up. And Linda she Hopkins. Has a, she has a star on the Walk of Fame in front of the really? in studio. So growing up with her, I got to meet all those people. So, so you got to meet Quincy? Yeah. So I didn't know you got to meet her. I was like, because yeah, I'm just I trying to picture with Quincy. I, Bro, I, I, I got, was trying to figure out a way to. On my Facebook page, they got pictures for with Quincy. For real. Yeah. I was trying to figure out a way to link you to people that you wanted to be around. And you was like, oh, man, man, I want to link with I this guy. I ain't going to lie. I've been blessed. Man. You've seen a, you met I've a been, lot of people. Man, I've been, man, I've been blessed. Like, Right, immensely. you know what I'm saying. You know, like, like uh, I've been blessed to the point where I'd be like, God, like, what did, what I, did do I do to deserve to this? Deserve this? You know what I'm saying? I mean, even when, even when times were bad, like, you know what I'm saying? I, like, I, you know, my mother sometimes would be like, you need to get paid for this and that. And I said, I know, Mom. I said, but you have to understand that I'm blessed. And she's like, and I said, because I do things that people wish they could do out here. I get paid to sing. People would wish, people would do, people did some things I do, people say, I just do it for free. And I'll be like, no, I gotta get paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I gotta get something, you know what I'm saying? And so I get to dress up, I get to do all of this and that. But the, so what my manager did was, my manager actually, we're getting the website again for me. And my, my manager actually, um, he said, I need you to start sending me pictures, God, we talk so much, of people that you've been around 
and I want to be able to put it on the website and show people that, that's, that, that's true. You that gotta you, have, and that I you do, mixed and mingled with. Yeah, a lot. I didn't, and I, I never thought you know, about it like that. I don't do it sometimes. Sometimes I see people, and I don't take. And my boy, uh, shout out to Voice Rogers, uh, great gospel singer, um, sang with MC Hammer as well. He used to tell, he always bugged me, Deuce, you should have took a picture with so-and-so because, you know, and I'd be like, ah, because I always think people do that when you die, you know, like they just want a picture so that when you die they can put up there. I knew you, but um, he was right. He was like, let people know the accomplishments, the things that you've been around. You, you're a multi-platinum singer and that sometimes I forget about. I, you know, because uh, I was talking to my cousin, and she was like, yeah, I just did um, Dee Dee Simon. I don't know if you know Dee Dee yeah, Simon. Yeah. She just produced a show out in uh, Yoshi's. Yoshi's. In you ever heard of Yoshi? Yoshi's famous nightclub in Oakland, California. Some of the greatest. Layla Hathaway, Earth, Wind & Fire, Tony, Tony, Tony. Um, uh, who else was there? Oh, Melba Moore was just there. And I got to, she got me on that stage to do some pen, Teddy Pendergrass and do Gangsta Lean. And it was just amazing. And What's your favorite Teddy Pendergrass song? Oh, man. I love everything. I love, you know which one up, I get like? Down, get no, funky, I'm a, come I've and go been with me. so many places, seen so many things. But I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the yeah, one right my, there. A lot of people that like one, Latest Greatest and That one's Latest yeah. Greatest, but it's another one that say, uh, it's another one that, that, and it don't hurt. No, and no, it no don't man, that's a bad right song. Now. Boy, that's a bad don't song. Hold, uh, man, oh, that thing go hard, oh, boy. Oh, 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 <laughs> not, and it don't hurt now. No, not now. Man, you know that. Hey, you know it used to be. No. <laughs> they ten years go hard, man. Man, ten, oh my God. Listen. You know, sometimes I be doing ten, and I was like, man, I wish I could have been in the studio with them he cats. Would, hey, listen, the one with him and Stephanie Mills, too. Oh, I, now let me tell you. I just did a thing called duets with a girl named. Uh, Could she go? Uh, uh, oh man, she's. We about to bring her out, Monique Renee. Yeah. And we did a thing called duets, and we we did. Um, yeah. And if I should lose your love, yeah. With any reason, any reason at all, just, just let my record show. I gave you all love. I know. Man. Feel me. I want to feel the fire, yeah. Boy, yeah. that thing, boy, Teddy was tough, man. boy, y'all. Hey, if you could have been in that studio, boy, you'd have been quiet. Oh, man. You, you would have been quiet. You wasn't about to do nothing. Man, you gonna be watching. I'd be like, I, uh, I, I told my mom, I said, you sure that ain't my daddy? Can it be my Because, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, and it's just, and you know he was a drummer. He was a drummer too. I didn't know that. He first started out in Harold Melvin the Blue Notes as the drummer. And I think they said it was doing a session. And I guess he was trying to tell them the note they needed to do. And, and they heard him like, sing. You know, and you know what's a trip? Like, I was in the drums. And it strips me out that, um, you know, Stokely, you ever heard of uh, Mint yeah, Condition? Yeah, yeah, you know, Stokely on, was a, a lot of, a lot of uh, Shaka Khan, drummer. It's a trip that a lot of drummers end up being like the lead singers. Lead singers, really? Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, trust me. Yeah. Do you think that? Do so you, this is some of the. Let me see. So let me see if I can. Oh, that's LJ. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, they go, they go, they go me and Quincy right here. Yeah, that's old Quincy, boy. Old Quincy Jones, man. What y'all doing together right there? Actually, they were giving him an award, and we were singing for him. And you know, and it was kind of a. Oh, they go Snoop Dogg's mom. They go, they must, yeah, she mean, passed away, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. I did something for her as well, and um, they go Hope right there. That's when I wanted to come here, Hope Flood. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Man, you see what I do. So, and then let me tell you what else I'm doing now. Since you guys got me back on the map, I'm actually hosting comedy shows out you here. You said we got him back on the map. We've I'm heard hosting, that before. Everybody tell us. Yeah, that. I'm serious. I'm doing a comedy show April 8th out of a place called Mamba's in Huntington Beach. Wow. Uh, I'm the host. Really? So I'm hosting it. I'm going to do a little, a little bit of comedy. You know, I guess they call it gangster comedy. I'm doing yeah, a yeah, comedy. yeah, yeah, yeah. And because um, I'm an entertainer, see, I realized that I'm not just a singer; I'm an actual entertainer. Man, you dope. And you funny? So, uh, I try to be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I try. <laughs> I like that. Is, is he funny? No, I'm messing. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? I just say what, what's what's real. You know, like I tell people. You know, like can I just tell one thing? Go ahead. Like I tell people, and I know I'm gonna use this joke on that day, so don't trip if you come out to the show. Um, but I'd say, you know, Mexican people, no offense, because you're not going to let in me. I said, you know, they really, they con artists. You know that, right, right? 
Mm -hmm. Mexican con artists, because think about this. Because, you know, I said Mexican con artists, because when you go to a black restaurant, what you get? You get chicken, fish, shrimp. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We got all these different varieties. I said, but guess what? They got us con because they, they, they have, what, tacos, they got burritos, they got, you know, and, and panadas, whatever. But guess what? It's all the same stuff. Mm -hmm. So what's in a taco? You got a, 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 a shell, you got meat, you got cheese, you got beans, and you got sour cream, right? What's in a burrito? You got a wrapped up, uh, instead of it being hard, it's a soft Same thing. shell. It's I know got that. meat, beans, cheese, mm -hmm. and uh, whatever. Okay, so you say, oh, well, you know what? I think I want a tostada. Well, that's just a flat one with beans, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> And you paying different prices, but you getting the same, same thing. Food. Mm -hmm. Same thing. But you food. go to a black restaurant, you gotta, you know, you gotta fix it up, yeah, man. Variety. And then we run out of stuff because we don't know what the people want. But I ain't gonna lie, that's kind of smart. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, hey, let me ask you this: Was you a Prince fan, man? Oh man, was I? He played twenty seven instruments, man. man. Man, let me be honest. I was such a I'm not gonna lie, I was such a Prince fan. I had the curly, you know, my hair is kind of, I had the curly key. You had the curly, all. you had it oh, ringing man. down and fighting. I was like, ooh, ooh. I, <laughs> I, I actually remember, I'm so old now, I actually slept. My mother allowed us to sleep outside. These, our parents was in the car watching us. We slept when Purple Rain came out. We actually were like the second or third person in line, and we slept outside for two days just to get a ticket to go see. You trying to get in that thing. Man, and when I got to, and you know, on my album, we did do me which yeah I, which actually i have to apologize in heaven to him for that but we did do me and uh we did like like do me baby it was awful <laughs> and um when when we came out when we first came out we was in vegas doing the show and um prince was there it was prince it was um also um uh, uh what's his name magic johnson was there and i seen prince and i got to me, Prince, like in person, you know what I'm saying? And I was trying to be cool, because I was like, I'm a gangster, I can't be all, ah, yeah. like that. So I was like, hey man, I said, hey, I want to apologize to you. And he said, for what? And I said, for doing your song and not doing it right. And he said, I ain't tripping, I liked it. He said, at least you paid me for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy, man. Like so. like, like the thing is, man, you, you've you seen these phases of music come in, man. How do you like where hip hop has us today? like? Do you are you good with what you're seeing? You can't seeing? ask me that question. Yeah, I gotta ask you fans. that. They don't I'm matter. You gotta fans, tell yeah. me. You, you gotta make tell me lose me the fans. Truth, man. I'm trying to get out there again. You gonna make me lose fans because I really. You know what? I guess because I am getting older, I kind of like the old traditional. I ain't gonna lie. I like the old. I don't like the mumble rappers right now. I mean, some of them are good, but um, but I, I like that old. I ain't, I'm gonna lie. I like that old beat. I like that. You know, I like that old um, hip hop beat that you could actually dance to and do things. I know everyone's trying to be you know creative and do different things that I applaud them but you know I sometimes I you know I, I think sometimes if it ain't broke you know why fix it you know when you guys came out with y'all music it was more about when you when you sung this is for my homies when y'all was singing that this is for the homies well well I love that song but y'all was trying to help me you know heal now these guys are stepping they with the drill me, I'm gonna do. I'm a yeah. They they. It's a it's it's a, did a, a whole. Well, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people didn't like our album because some of it was corny. I mean, we did do stuff like. Um, um, mm -hmm. um, we did do stuff. We did do stuff like um, nigga with a badge. You know, we we had songs like that. Forty four ways about us going to prison, why we went to prison, stuff like that. We did have that, and I'll be honest with you. Now that I look back, we were really ahead of our time. If you look at the 44 Ways, uh, Nigga with a Badge, all those songs, those songs really, really should have been made today because that's basically, and this is what just happened with Tyree Nichols? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, if you listen to Nigga with a Badge, um, basically it's, you just a nigga with a freeze, mother, freeze, free, you know what I'm saying? And it basically talks about a brother that actually goes down and whoops on and basically beats up a brother Thing is, if you listen to the old album, a lot of stuff is going to resonate today, and that's like 28 years ago. So that's 28 kinda, years ago. 28 years, man, and the stuff that's is still going on today. We're still doing the same thing. We still that's a whole. So that stepping and 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 I'm a uh, you know uh, you know people getting killed that night shooting dice uh, down in Houston take off uh, uh, was 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 mar was martyred was killed. Uh, uh, it was an accident, they say. Uh, details are coming out. People are going up against each other. You know. Uh, How was it an accident? 
because they're saying he wasn't the guy that was intended to be shot. Okay, but he intended to kill somebody. Yeah. So there ain't no accident. You you meant to kill somebody. It might not have been the intended target, but you pulled it out to do some harm. Yeah. And you did, and that's what you did. You did harm. Wow. You know, and what's so sad is that I heard the brother wasn't even in the game. No, he wasn't. He was just a bystander. Yeah. And and that's what I'm saying about mental illness now with us. I mean, you got to think about it. I mean, I mean, why don't we value ourselves anymore? We don't value ourselves anymore. What do you think no about more? the way that they're coming out speaking on it? Like, you got different people from from the South speaking about it, and, and different, the OGs speaking out, different people are saying things, and then you got the youngsters going up against the old. It's looked very distasteful to me, the way it's just playing out right about it. I'm going to be honest with you. The first thing I said when it happened, I said, oh, Lord, Houston and Atlanta are going to be battling each other. That's the first thing. And that's sad that we think like that now. That's the first thing I thought, oh, man, Houston and, and Atlanta, they're going to be battling. They're going to be fighting with each other. And it's just sad in our culture that that's how we think. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and you know, and I mean, I, can't, I mean, I just feel like kind of the devil got in the middle of that because he was the, he was the art, art of that group. He was the one that made the beats. He's the one that, you know what I'm saying? So it's like they cut off a, a artery or, you know, like a, a, a limb that you actually need. you right-handed. You need to talk with your right hand. They cut that right hand I off. I tell everybody, uh, Lamar, uh, I tell people, them people are speaking from a hurt place. When, when you see right now the arguments going on, or if you see, like, uh, the, it was alleged to, that uh, Quavo didn't want Offset to come on stage with him the other night. When well, they, they had a fight back then. Correct. And, yeah. and so... I tell people and they relatives. They it's coming Family. from a hurt place though. Oh yeah, but it's, and we don't we don't think we don't think sometimes it's, it's, when it comes. This here is trauma. This is mental illness. This is at its finest. It's on the stage, right in the midst of us. And we say we talk about it. We need to do this and we need to do that. We're watching it displayed right in front of us in that situation. And the thing is, it's not and it's not just because they're famous. You gotta realize this is happening every day. It's every, happening all, in every all family. All the families are going through that. Somebody died and that. things start going transpiring after that. People are speaking from a hurt place. And and we and, we, and this is what I, and this is and, and black people. This is what I'm gonna tell you. We cannot expect to catch up to. No offense, and white people can get mad at me. We can't expect to catch up to white people who've had well four to six hundred years before we did. We can't. Like we that. can't. We can't be like fifty years. We got to. Oh, we we made it. No, we ain't. We haven't even touched the surface. Until we get, until things have changed and we become the top tier and we get another 400 years, that's when we can say, okay, now we've made it. But just because we make, some of us making, people making money doing that does not mean that, because you have to realize that it, it doesn't trick, in our community, it doesn't trickle down. Mm -hmm. In our community, it stays here. We don't trickle down. We don't have, um, like I was saying, like what I loved about, even though I know he's a little off, but what I loved about the whole situation with Kanye was that it opened people's minds up saying, well, Kanye is looking at it like, okay, let me go here. He couldn't get here. He couldn't get there. Great, because guess what? It made us talk about, well, we don't own our own. It'd be different if he was another nationality, like if he was Jewish. They have their own um, um, manufacturing companies. They have their own rubber plants. They have their own things we don't have that uh -huh. we have to go we have to give our money to them in order to do that and to me hopefully that's opening up the ears and minds of people saying well maybe we should unify africa maybe we should try to go over there and talk to them and say hey why don't we have our own manufacturing companies why don't we do our own have our own distribution companies why don't we have our own you know what i'm saying so that if something like that ever happens again i don't have to go back to that other community i can go to my own community you know what I'm saying? You guys do the fashion. You understand? Definitely do fashion. Yes. Yeah. Oh man, you understand that that um, the swatches that come from Korea and Japan and, and China, they get them a lot cheaper than we do sometimes yeah. because they have that connection. They got family. We need to get like that. Man, thank you so much, Lamar. Man, we love you, brother. You always oh, man, do me a good show. I knew when you come to Dallas, you come in on the show. Yeah, you, well, you know, me and Dallas don't get along sometimes. But well, uh, but, but you know, I did. I did ask. Uh, 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 I did, and this didn't happen in Dallas. It happened out here. I did ask uh, Sir Charles about what we had spoken about that time. He remembered it. Oh, he remembered. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out. Yeah, uh, 
Sir Charles, if you're listening, I need to do a song. We need to do a song together. He remembered it. Come on. He let's sure do. remembered he it. it. Yeah, I went over his he, house, he, didn't I? He a cool brother, though. I, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> he a cool brother. He a cool brother, though. But, man, but, um, I love I'm, all of y'all, man. And I'm stepping into his territory, so I'm like, come on, <laughs> come on, Sir Charles. Come he, on. He, he run that thing over there a lot. Oh, he do. Yeah, I'm saying, come on, Sir Charles. You, you see I'm in here now. Sir come Charles, on. Charles, let's do something out. together. I got a song called Dance Floor. I need you to get on it with me. Man, that'll be hard, too, man. Oh, man. Man, the beats and the way that y'all could work together. He got a whole setup in his house. You know he, he's I'm, serious I'm about it. Look, look, you you saw it on Boss Talk 101. Okay, come on, Sir Charles. Let's do this. Man, you know, I think it's Pokey Bear and Bad News. They all run in the same circles. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. check it, man. Hey, man, thank you so much for coming on the show. We love you, Lamar. Lubin, it's been a Lamar Deuce Lubin. Let me get it right, man. Yes. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we out. Man. Come on.